All right, hello my friends. We are making rolled beeswax candles for Candlemas or Groundhog's Day or in bulk, however you celebrate. Um, we have done this a couple years ago with the Buckets and Boots group, um, but I decided to bring it back with a little bit of a different um, design. So if you remember how to do this from before, you can absolutely do different designs, cuts, however you'd like. Otherwise, this video is just to help you um, have a visual on um, rolling the candles and then how to uh, use the decorative beeswax to add some embellishments to it. First thing, um, I always like to talk about why we're celebrating. And the biggest thing is February 2nd is the halfway point to spring. Um, so whether you look at it as a half glass full, half empty sort of situation, um, we are definitely half full. We are halfway to spring. Um, winter is halfway over. Um, and that's a wonderful thing to celebrate. We can celebrate that the sun is returning um, so that there's uh, more light. A lot of people at this time of year start planting their gardens. Um, any seedlings inside that need a really big start ready for spring um, get started to be planted. And um, just really looking forward to warmer weather, right? Um, so it, it's a good reason to celebrate. At the end of this video, after we're done with the candle rolling, I'll give you some other options on how you can celebrate um, and uh, make some fun things with your kids. So first of all, this is really big craft on um, using senses. So as you can probably smell as soon as you got your your bag was that the beeswax smells amazing. Um, so smell it all you want because it is delicious. I love just even walking by candles that aren't even lit um, because they just smell so good in the house. Um, but the wax can break. As you see here, I'm using pieces that have been broken. Hopefully yours arrived to you in one piece. Um, but if they do break, it's okay because um, you know, the heat kind of melds it together, so there's nothing really wrong with it. Um, and I'm sorry if that happened to you. Um, but what you want to do is first we can take our hands and warm them up. So we can rub them together. Get some heat between our hands. And then we can just lay them over the beeswax. Now, doing this with the kids, you can tell that this is bumpy. It feels kind of different on our fingertips so um, you can spend some time smelling and rubbing and warming up the beeswax you can just hold your hands on it it really doesn't take a whole lot once you start rolling the beeswax out if it starts cracking um, then you know that you need to go back and kind of warm it up a little bit more but once your fingertips start kind of going over it it really does warm up just fine. All right, so you can grab your wax or your wick. Um, it is coated in wax. Um, what you want to do is make it big enough um, that your candle, when rolled, it will go all the way across. And some scissors. Just cut off one end. You can trim the wick that you'll light later on. You can keep it longer so you don't have to worry about it getting stuck inside the candle. If you'll notice, the heat of your hands may already be making the wick stick to the wax. So you're going to just take the end. Mine warmed up so much it stuck to my board here. And I'll give you a closer view of this, but you're going to take this end where you're going to start rolling. And if you have young children, you might want to do this first for them. Because they can do the, the rolling part. We just want to make sure that the wick actually stays in place. Um, so you can see that I just rolled over a small amount of the sheet to hold the wick in place. And as long as it's like that, 
the kids can actually roll this because it doesn't have to be super tight at all. It doesn't have to be tight at all. Um, it, it burns really nicely and it burns really quick. Um, so if you get them started, I'm literally just rolling this up. It can be bumpy, it can be lumpy, and they just roll, roll, roll. It's kind of fun listening to it crackle and snap, pop. Okay, and when you come to the end, all you have to do to kind of seal that is again, hold it in your hand. And the heat, I'm not squeezing it or anything, just the heat from your hand will help kind of seal that crease there. And that is how easy it is to make a tapered rolled beeswax candle. Now, I have one I made earlier. This one has the little embellishments. Made a little handmade mushroom, if you will, on that one. So that's what I'll show you next. So you can set your candle to the side. You should have three different small cutters. And then different colors of decorative wax. Now, as you can tell, this one is softer. Um, it doesn't have as strong as a beeswax smell, but it is beeswax. It is actually from Stockmar. It's made in Germany. And it's nice and thin, so it's easy to mold. Um, with just the littlest of heat from your hands um, and then it melts right along with the candle so just a simple for especially for younger kids um, you can take the cutter and if they want to warm it up a little bit it should already it's so thin that it it it's okay but um, they can warm it up again and then you simply just put your cutter on there give it a good press and the trickiest part is you peeled it off and now it's stuck in there, right? So these actually green pieces come off. Um, you can take your scissors or anything else you're using and just, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Push it out along the edges until you can peel it out. Now I showed you what you should not do and that's poke a hole in the middle <laughs> um so you could just squeeze it till the wax kind of forms back in but now you have a little embellishment um that you can stick on the candle just the heat of your hand sticks oops sorry just the heat of your hand sticks it right on so you don't have to press very hard at all now for older kids they could um decorate this um, or make a little scene on their candle if they wanted. Um, you might have the younger kids really love stamping out the different, stamping out the decorative wax and just putting them all over. Let them do whatever they'd like, right? This is their candle, um, so let them decorate it. It's going to be gorgeous burning any which way it's decorated. So let them have fun putting on whatever they want. It's really the fun part of it. Um, sometimes I get out my kids' Play-Doh accessories, um, so if you have some, let them use those um, to cut different things out. It works just as well. You can cut small strips um, with the pieces, you know, and then just kind of lay it on there. I actually think for younger kids, if they're not into the cutters, um, just to give them like a pizza roller or pizza cutter and just cut a bunch of strips. And then just let them kind of like mosaic all over the candle. I think that would look really, really cool. Um, but totally child-led. I mean, they can do and decorate however they want. But I think it would look really amazing if you let your younger kiddo do that 
Uh, make sure to post a picture. I'd love to see it. So for older kids, obviously, um, and, or adults, because I know some of you got some extra sheets, which is totally fine because this is so much fun to me as well. Um, for, you could get as detailed as you want on these. Um, like I said, I, I just kind of did this one uh, by hand earlier, super quick. Um, but I thought just for the sake of the video, um, that I would show you how to make a pinwheel. And I made one earlier. The lighting's kind of hard to see it, but there you go. I made this one earlier. I didn't attach it to anything because I wanted to show you how to make that. So you can take um, the square that you received. You can use this size. It will be double this size though um, because this is actually, oh no, this is actually a quarter of this. I forgot. I cut these into fours. Um, so this will be quite, if you use the whole piece, it will be quite a big pinwheel. Um, but I'm going to use it this big to show you how to make it. So what you can do is you can cut this into fourths, okay, and then follow my directions. But again, so you can see this better, I'm going to use um, it this large on this video. And this looks like a piece of cheese, doesn't it? I promise it's not. <laughs> okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this from the corners towards the center and I totally forgot that I actually used scissors to do this um, not the pizza roller so you're gonna cut in from the corner and go to the next corner you're gonna cut in you don't want to go all the way through obviously we want to keep it connected there in the middle I'm gonna cut in that one and cut in that one now what happens if you accidentally cut through and one falls off it's wax so it's totally moldable. Moldable. You can literally just squeeze it in the middle and get it to stay again. Okay. So now you have your piece of cheese. I'm <laughs> just kidding. You have your wax cut from the corners to the center. And now let's start from the left side. I'm trying to show this to you guys here. So I'm going to start with my first upside down triangle there. Start from the left side and I'm going to fold it in to the center and give it a little squeeze so it kind of melts in there. And I'm going to turn it again, pull the left side in, a little squeeze, turn it, fold the left side in. A little squeeze left side in and a little squeeze so there you have a pinwheel now as I mentioned if you did the full one this is pretty large for your candle no doubt you could totally do it that big it's up to you but if you cut that square that I sent the decorative wax pieces in um, into fourths and then do your cutting from the outside corners towards the middle this is how small it will be um, just as big as your as a one of the shapes that you got it'll be that small so that's about the right size then you'll have lots of wax left over um, for the kids save every single little piece of scrap um, because the I mean you'll never know when you need a little color or something or these can be um, shaped into different things, which I'll explain here in a second with your leftovers. So save all those pieces. Um, the kids might have fun with them after they're done making candles. All right, so um, again, you can just decorate your candles. Um, a way I like to display them is I some, we sometimes we get apple juice in these uh, Martinelli's glass bottles and they're just like the perfect size to set one candle in um sometimes i'll melt the wet i'll light it and let the wax drip in there and then 
push it down in it till it melts and sticks it straight up in the air and you can really do that in any glass jar but it's just kind of cute in these little ones um another way is uh whatever if you have lots of candles that you've made if you have a lower jar you can always put beans dried beans of course or sand or rice um, and stick all the candles at them and then light them that would make a really beautiful display on your table so just a couple different ideas to do all right let's see so now that you've made your candles I just wanted to give you a couple more ideas on how to use some of the things uh, reuse some of the things that you have in your kit so these um, can actually be cut obviously for dough or cooking um, but they are pretty tiny, so my suggestion would be have some fun with these and let the kids punch out some food with these. Um, so whether you cut out some cheese, um, or maybe you have some meat or veggies and do fun different shapes, um, they could have some a lot of fun with these. I think that's cute to have in the kitchen and get them um, into eating different things in different shapes. That'd be a fun way to get them to eat new things too huh? all right so what I had mentioned was saving your scraps earlier um, this wax can also be used for just molding it never dries out so even though you put it on your candle to burn and it will eventually melt um, you can make these things just for decoration um, to set out or for the kids to, oops, or for the kids to use as you're reading to them. Again, it's kind of uh, just stuck that on the bottom to make it a little look like a windmill or a pinwheel. Um, they could make a picture or a scene with the different extra pieces that you have. Um, Bennett, I didn't bring it with me, but Bennett yesterday, my son, um, he just made some kind of like little face out of the extra little pieces of, of this wax actually that had broke off in the box. Um, and I made a little heart, shaped it into a little heart. So it's really good for, for kids. Um, it's a really different texture than Play-Doh. Um, it's not as mushy, it doesn't dry out, um, and it smells beautiful. So give it a try. Um, if you have a lot of leftover just let them play with it and, and hold in their hand and, and make into different things. Um, you know, like I said, while you're reading a story even, or just to make a design or a picture sometime while you're playing. All right, so during this time of the year, we celebrate the sun. Um, and some fun ways to do that, of course, is having a pancake dinner. We used to meet at Stockholm Inn and have a pancake dinner all together. Um, I highly recommend that again. On or near February 2nd, it's just a fun way to be like, oh yeah, it's the time that we have pancakes. Um, they're circles, so they represent the sun. Um, it's a great time of year to make window sun catchers. As the sun is shining in and we're gaining more sunlight, you seem to notice it. Um, as if you have a, a crystal in your window and the rainbows start to dance all over the place. Um, but a big one, is, another big one is um, shadow play. And this comes along with here in the United States, we celebrate Groundhog's Day on February 2nd. Um, so a fun way to do that, that we celebrate here in the U.S. is by shadows. Um, so while we still have a little bit of, of darkness in the evening hours, go ahead and turn the lights off and make some, uh, turn on a bright light and make some shadow puppets on the wall. If you go to Pinterest um, and search for like, um, hand shadows, hand puppets, shadows. <laughs> There's so many different ways you can try to like mold your hands. Like I remember when it's just like do some old school ones, but um, the bunny, uh, they can show you a ton of different creatures and critters. That would be a fun pastime to do with you and your kids um, to celebrate our halfway to spring. Get ready. We're halfway there. Hope you had lots of fun making candles, guys. Talk to you soon.